Alright guys, sorry about that. I didn't realize I was going to get cut off. Um, I don't even remember where I was, so I was probably going on a tangent about Crow Cop, how he was on Roids, which I don't think he was the only one that was on Roids, but, or probably I was on Shogun, I don't know. Either one of those guys. Shogun has no more cardio since he got injured, and Crow Cop I think needs to take get get mean again if he can get mean he'll be better that's all i needed to say about those two aurelio i don't think um people are gonna bring him up uh he just lost to guida and he's gonna be fighting another guy pretty soon uh i never considered aurelio uh a top potential in mm or in pride uh he beat gomi once which i agree by a lot of people are gonna say gomi was a protected champion i think gomi's great and when he's in shape and ready to fight he's pretty hard to beat on the end really hard to beat. I think BJ Penn one of the, is one of the only guys that could take on a good Gomi and beat him at 55, maybe even at well, 170. I think there are a couple of guys, but at 55. Um, so, I don't even consider Aurelio even up there. Uh, his only big win, if you ever look at his record, his only really big win would be against Gomi. And then he lost to Ishida, I believe it was. Pretty sure it was Ishida he got beat by, and then he got beat by Gomi again. So, uh, that's a ridiculous uh, claim for anybody to think Aurelio. I mean, of all the f f uh, lightweights they could have brought over, they bring Aurelio, probably the worst one over there. So, I'm going to go into that when I go into my conspiracy theory, and I'm going to make it, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get flamed and get called a dumbass for it, but I'm going to give you my conspiracy theorist probably tomorrow. Um,. So, I guess we can bring it up to more of the big news um, that goes over some of the basic stuff that we could talk about. Um, the big news right now would be Fedor not accepting uh, the UFC's contract, uh, Randy leaving the UFC, and now Arona signing to M1, where Fedor just signed to M1. There's two options here. Uh, let's start off with Fedor, I guess. Everybody loves Fedor. I honestly think he's the number one heavyweight. I don't think he's ever been controlled outside of his fight with Arona. I think Arona's the only guy that gave him a hard fight. Uh, Crow Cop gave him a hard fight, but Fedor pretty much controlled the pace, controlled the striking, controlled the ground, controlled everything. I mean, it was basically Fedor hour during that fight. Outside of a few, few, flurry, few flurries from Crow Cop. Uh, and, of course, the Fujita punch where... Fedor really got pissed off and hurt Vegeta badly afterwards. Um, so yeah, I love Fedor. Um, I don't think I wouldn't. I don't think his mind was about money as it was about promises. I mean, you got to look at it his way. He's one of the biggest stars in Russia right now. So you got a couple of he's got a couple of options and of course uh Nuker, I mean I was there on the debate with him. His big thing was if he wanted to be if he wanted to stay claiming that he's number one in the world, he should fight Randy, he should fight in the Mecca of mixed martial arts, that is the UFC. I don't agree with that. I think the UFC right now, uh being led by Dana White, has become kind of like all right, think of it like this. You you're one of the best Basketball. You're Michael Jordan. You're the best basketball players out there, and a team, other, another team just won that championship, and that team comes to you and says, "Okay, well, you're a free agent, and we want you, and we're offering you more money than anybody can ever offer you. So we're the best team. You should come play with us. If you if you want to be called the best player, you should be playing with the best team. And but they don't ask you nicely. They say, "Well, you're gonna do what we tell you. You're gonna do what when we tell you. And if you don't like it, fuck you. You're gonna do it anyways." And then you got another guy saying, well, we won't pay you as much. We can only pay you half as much of what they're paying you. But we want you over here. We we would love to have you over here and all that. We would, we'd honor you. We'd have you fight, you know, guys that you need to fight. But, you know, we're going to appreciate having you here. And we're not going to basically demand things from you. And it's all about approach. I mean, a lot of – that's a big thing about business and a lot of people don't understand – it's all about sales. I mean, if you if you can sell your product to somebody, whether it be your company to come work for them and woo them over, or whether it be selling a piece of shit car to Joe Shit the Ragman that you know can't afford it and you know it's going to put him into bankruptcy, and he knows it's going to be put him into bankruptcy, but you can still sell it to him. 
That's what it's all about. And I think they, I think M1 sold it to him. I think, uh, and I think his manager had a lot to do with it. To be honest, I mean, I'm not even gonna play stupid there and say Fedor, you know, blah 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 blah. I know his manager had a lot to do with it. I know his manager has an interest in him fighting in M1, and I think he had a lot to do with that as well. But then again, when you look at it, he's been with this manager for years. Why would he not trust him? Has the manager not done him right? So I mean, I don't I don't see anything wrong with not going to the UFC, especially if the if I was one of the if I was in his shoes and the UFC came to me saying we're gonna give you seven million dollars to fight five fights or fight ten fights, but you're gonna do exactly what we tell you and no you're not doing this and no you're not doing that and fuck your demands you're gonna listen to us I'd say fuck you I'll <laughs> I'll take a pay cut I'm not working for you buddy and I think that's what ended up happening. Uh, uh, I go back to Nukers because I think he's the biggest uh, anti. Fedor guy out there, I'm not sure why, I mean, he thinks he's a can, and whatever, and I'm probably going to go back and mention him, uh, I don't I don't see the point of mentioning him, I, I, I talked to him in the debate on Stickum, so that's all that needs to be said, uh, basically, I don't think uh, Randy, I think Randy left for a lot of the same reason why Fedor didn't sign, because UFC has this now mentality, now that pride's gone, and that they're the the lone wolf in the in the pack, you know, they're the big, they're the alpha wolf right now. That they could basically tell the guys what they're gonna they're like. What are they? What are you gonna do? Take less money? We got the most money. You're gonna do exactly what we say. And unfortunately, Randy said, "Well, I don't need to hear this shit," and he quit. Not only that, the, also the fact that he was probably holding out to face Fedor, and when that didn't come through, he decided to quit because he doesn't want to put up with their bullshit and not get the fight that he wants. It's not only about money. He even said he just didn't like the way he had too many headbutts with the management. So it wasn't just about money. It was about management, and I think that was the big problem is that UFC's got this crazy mentality thinking that despite the fact that they're the only big fish in the sea, that they're their only fish in the sea. Um, so, yeah, what do I want to see? I'd like to see Randy and Fedor fight. I think Randy might control the first two rounds if it's a five-round fight, if it's a unified rules fight in a cage or in a ring. Uh, I think Randy might control it, and if Randy does win, I think it's either going to be by a decision or by a cut, because I don't think Randy's going to really put that much... I don't, I've never seen Fedor dominate it. Period. You, you've never seen it happen. And I don't think... I think bigger men, stronger men, and better men on the ground than Randy have tried and failed. So I don't think... I think if Herring, who's not as good as a wrestler as Randy, but if Herring that gets on top and who got on top of Fedor couldn't put that much pain on top of him despite the fact that Herring was so much bigger than Randy is, so much bigger than Fedor is couldn't do that much I don't think Randy can unless he cuts Fedor which is possible because Fedor cuts like toilet paper um if, it do, if they do fight though and Randy doesn't get the cut and he doesn't get the lay and pray decision, I'm seeing Fedor basically controlling the fight and getting in either a UD, he might pull a submission. I don't see it happening. Randy has a great submission defense. Um, yeah, so I, I don't see him TKO and Randy either. I, I see him controlling them. Randy has a hard time when bigger guys get on top of him, and Fedor's not much bigger than Randy, but a little bit bigger, and I think he's dealt with bigger guys, and I think he's dealt with better guys than Randy. Randy is highly overrated right now because he beat Tim Silva, who hasn't been the same since he got hurt and since he got off the roids himself, and Gabriel Gonzaga, who beat, uh, <laughs> looks like a, a crow cop that had just woken up from a nap and walked out to the ring. So Th That's my opinion. I like Randy, and I think he's one of the best of all time, but I think he's highly overrated right now. There's a huge wave of Randy nuthuggery going on. Um, Arona, he just signed. I guess that's the rumor. He just signed to M1. That's good because I like to see Arona versus Fedor again. I think Arona's the only bad matchup with Fedor. Arona is extremely strong. He's in a really good lay and pray wrestler. Not that great on ground and pound, but he's good enough on ground and pound. Where I think he'd give Fedor some problems, and that'd be a good fight I'd like to watch. I don't think it'd be a popular fight with a lot of people, so I don't I don't see it happening. But it'd be a good fight. Um, if he doesn't, I think they got some really big names there and. I don't know if it's Mark Cuban or if it's the McMahons or if it's some maybe Donald Trump decides to try to get into this stuff. I don't know, to be honest. It might be freaking uh, Ted Turner for all we know. But uh, I'm hoping it's Mark Cuban because he seems like he's really eager to work uh, with MMA artists. So 
if it is him, he's got a lot of aces in the hole. He's already got fighters under his name for HDNet and have Fedor and Arona on there. It's incredible. All right, guys. So that's me. That's it for the day. I think I'm about to run out of time. So take it easy, guys.